Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm holding an emergency meeting with oil executives one day after President Biden called for a holiday on the federal gasoline tax. The White House trying to put a lid on fuel prices with gasoline soaring 70 percent since the beginning of the year. But will Washington be able to do anything, anything at all to lower prices? Joining me now is Dan Jurgen, vice chairman of S&P Global. He's the author of The New Map Energy, Climate and the Clash of Nations. That book, as you're seeing right there, all about the changing landscape and energy. Thank you very much, Dan Jurgen, for being here right now with us. I know a lot of people are calling you right now because there's a lot of stuff happening in the energy markets overall. I understand that your phone is probably ringing off the hook these days, given what's I happening in Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. Dan, I mean, so, so let's take us through with the narrative, the story about this right now. Is there anything that the Biden administration can do to really provide meaningful relief at the pump for Americans like you and I? It can provide some relief. And, Dominic, it was really good that, in fact, this conversation took place, and it shouldn't be just once. We need it on an ongoing basis. There's some things that can be done, like relaxing summertime requirements on gasoline, which would give more flexibility, perhaps using relaxing the Jones uh, Act restrictions and moving gasoline from the, from the uh, Gulf Coast to the East Coast. You know, there are things like that. And maybe there's also some extra product in Canada that could be brought in if the specifications. But basically, this is a global problem. Uh, every country in the world is facing these problems now because the whole global refinery system uh, has been disrupted by, of course, the recovery from COVID. On top of that was uh, that the industry really wasn't prepared. There had been shutdowns because uneconomic. And then two other things, Russia and China which are important parts, and that's affected the system as well. So there are limited things you can do. Uh, one other thing that I should say that's really important is beginning a discussion about how we prepare if a refinery uh, is hit by hurricanes in the Gulf Coast. And I think that this is the kind of dialogue that we need to have on a regular basis. So, so Dan, it's interesting, uh, you know, not to bring partisan politics into this, but many of the things that you just mentioned were things that were talked about over the last four to five years, especially during the Trump administration, with regard to relaxing certain regulations on energy, refining, certainly opening up capacity, getting, getting more things, suspension of the Jones. I mean, there's a lot of things we're talking about right now. Is that really the course of action? Do we need to kind of turn back the clock a little bit here and, and get that, well, that, risk, that kind of conversation reset? Well, certainly some of these issues, whenever we have a, a crisis, and this is a crisis for the American motorists today and for American consumers, these things are on the table. And these have been done in the past. And uh, I think by regulations, what they mean, particularly like having to switch from a winter grade to a summer grade of, uh, of gasoline. Uh, so I think some relaxation is what we've done in emergencies before. And this is an emergency for, for the country, for the economy, for inflation. Do you feel as though the conversation, given this crisis right now, given the war between Russia and Ukraine, given the issues that are facing our supply chain, do you think the narrative around fossil fuels has now become a little bit more accommodative? Do you feel as though even though progressive proponents of alternative energy realize that there is going to be a longer transition phase where fossil fuels are part of the picture? I think that's a very important point. Clearly, the message a couple of years ago, even a year ago, is you may as well shut down your refinery because everybody's going to be driving an electric car. I think the big change, and to kind of put a framework around it, is a new focus on energy security and that these changes take time. And that as, a, as a world, as a country, we're continuing to be 80 percent roughly dependent on hydrocarbons. And so uh, I think there is a... Um, a realization, and you see it in, in the Biden administration a year ago, they were not calling for more production of domestic oil. They were not calling for more refinery uh, utilization. By the way, we're at, maxed out and the refineries can't run any higher than they are. Uh, but that's, I think that's the evidence of the change at hand, that you've got to deal with the world as it is today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.